Welcome back to Champions of Care, sponsored by Oakwood Healthcare. We're at Oakwood Hospital and Medical Center in Dearborn, which is a designated primary stroke center. We'll be speaking with a neurointerventionalist who will talk about the therapies available to help you in those first crucial moments when you f have the signs of a stroke. And don't forget, if you do have signs or symptoms, call 911. An interventional neurologist um, or neurointerventionalist is someone who specializes in minimally invasive procedures involving vascular disorders of the uh, head, neck, and spine. And so people who go into this field, interventional neurology, interventional neuroradiology, neuroendovascular surgery, there are a number of names for essentially the same specialty, come from three different backgrounds, neurology, radiology, or neurosurgery, and we've all done specialty-specific training to focus on disorders of the blood vessels of the head, neck, and spine. My background is a stroke neurologist, and um, I later trained in interventional neuroradiology to teach me the minimally invasive procedures and techniques using the machines um, in the background to uh, treat patients with uh, vascular disorders of um, uh, the head, neck, and spine. We are in a biplane angio suite. Um, uh, angiography is a technique where there are catheters placed in the blood vessels, usually from the groin, and threaded up through the arteries of the belly, chest, and neck under x-ray guidance. Contrast or dye is injected into the catheters, and at the same time, x-ray images are acquired in frontal views as well as side views, so that's um, AP, anteroposterior, and lateral views, at the same time that the dye is being injected, and we view in real time how the dye passes through the arteries of the head and neck, and we're able to determine if there are any abnormalities or whether the blood vessels are normal and um, whether any treatment is required. So this is very specialized uh, technology that is not available in every hospital, but it's essential for doing the type of procedures that neurointerventionalists do. Being a primary stroke center means that the hospital has been certified by JACO, Joint Commission on Accreditation of Hospital Organizations, to provide disease-specific, in this case stroke-specific treatment as well as management, delivery of acute therapies such as clot-busting medications, um, adherence to performance measurement uh, measurement and improvement guidelines and um, there are eight key performance measures that are monitored in JACO primary stroke centers and those include uh, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis that's number one basically preventing clots from forming while patients are hospitalized number two is making sure that stroke patients are started on an appropriate antithrombotic or blood thinning medication by the end of hospital day two while tests are in progress number three is making sure they go home on one of these blood thinning medications, um, antithrombotic, for example, aspirin. Um, number four is making sure patients who have atrial fibrillation, which is a very common irregular heart rhythm that is associated with higher rates of stroke, making sure these patients go home on appropriate blood thinners, such as Coumadin. Um, number five is making sure that they have appropriate stroke education uh, in order to learn the signs and symptoms of stroke, um, activate emergency medical services, and come in in a timely fashion. Uh, number six is making sure they are assessed for thrombolytics, which is clot-busting medication. Um, those can only be administered to a small percentage of our stroke patients based on the time window and based on whether the stroke is in evolution or, or already completed. And then number eight is making sure that stroke patients are assessed for rehabilitation. Many stroke patients have um, a moderate to significant amount of disability from the stroke, and all of those rehabilitation needs need to be addressed uh, initially in the hospital, as well as later on in inpatient or outpatient rehabilitation settings, depending on the severity of the stroke. TPA is tissue plasminogen activator. It's a recombinant medication that is available uh, in all primary stroke centers. A combination of the emergency medicine physician as well as the neurologist on call will evaluate each patient with an acute stroke. The FDA has approved it for up to three hours, uh, but the American Stroke Association has recently released guidelines that say that uh, TPA can be given up to four and a half hours after the onset of symptoms of a stroke. That time is not equal, meaning that if you had the chance to give the clot buster in the first one hour, it's better than giving it in the second hour, which is better than giving it in the third hour. So it's declining efficacy of the medication during that four and a half hour window. 
TPA is not a magic bullet, so it is great for uh, most strokes where the clot is blocking an important artery resulting in uh, neurological disability. It's not good if the stroke has already completed itself, meaning you can already see changes of the damage on the CT scan. And it's definitely not appropriate if the, it's a bleeding type of stroke. TPA is, a blood, is basically a potent blood thinner, and so you can't give it in cases of bleeding. Um, it is sometimes helpful for large clots, but like I said, it's not a magic bullet, and so there will be some instances where TPA is appropriate, is given, but doesn't work, and we have to think of the next step. Patients who come in with severe stroke symptoms who are early in the time uh, from last known well uh, are candidates for all types of therapies, including IV thrombolytics, that's TPA, intra-arterial or catheter-based delivery of thrombolytics uh, directly at the site of the clot, or mechanical treatments to capture the clot and a suction or retrieve it from the site of blockage um, in the head or neck. If you feel that you're having a stroke or signs or symptoms that are suggestive of a mini stroke, even if the symptoms go away, call 911. You are more likely to receive life saving therapies such as IV TPA or clot retrieval procedures if you come in with the bells and whistles. Um, also, if you or your family member were to drive yourself to the hospital, there's a chance you may have to pull over to the side of the road, which further delays care if there were new issues that arose with your symptoms. So. Um, this is something that the public needs to know. Many patients, many of our patients continue to come in on their own, which can delay uh, the delivery of these acute treatments. Next on Champions of Care, we'll return to the studio, and Mary Zatina will interview an Oakwood affiliated physical medicine and rehab specialist to talk about rehabilitation following a stroke. Stay with us. Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? Oh, this is probably nothing. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost.